<laughs> Our meeting format is as follows. Week one, uh, speaker on step of the month. Week two, speaker with more than five years. Week three, speaker on sponsorship. We're in week four, so I got a speaker on NA literature. Um, I brought my man, Sean. Sean was one of those people that when I first came in the rooms, um, he kind of took me under his wing. He had a few months more than me, and um, he made me feel comfortable, introduced me to a bunch of people. Um, and then um, I think he picked up an 18-month medallion on Xanax. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. And we all knew. Uh, we all knew something was wrong. But it was amazing. <laughs> Because even in the using addict, the program of Narcotics Anonymous was still working. Even, right. you know, right. this is how powerful this shit is. We got a room full of people tonight trying to recover, and it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just hope that you guys can get out of this guy. Because you're going to have five years clean in how long? Mm, six days. In six days. <laughs> On Xanax, if it has to be, <laughs> come back and get five years clean too, right? Um, he's gonna speak on literature for us, so help me welcome my man, my brother, Sean. Yeah, Sean! Sure. No, no, I'm good. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He asked me if I need the stool like I'm that old. <laughs> my, name, my name is Sean. Sean! Uh, I'm a little nervous. 12 Step House, it's our group. Big deal. Um, Narcotics Anonymous, fucking love it. Um, so we're gonna have some fun tonight. Yeah. Right? Uh, you know, I talk a little shit and I like that fun. My sponsor's not here, so I can really talk shit. Um, you know, I get a little short on breath and we'll talk about that too. I was sick a while ago, but we're gonna get into that. Um, before I get into the literature, you know, like my story is. Yo, I'm a crackhead from Miami, right? Like, that's the best way to describe myself. I like using until I'm talking to shadows <coughs> and hiding in bathrooms. And, like, no joke, like, I, you know, I came to narcotics in 2009. I got two years clean. I met a girl. I used six years later because I thought I could just drink alcohol and, st- and, and, and be fine, right? Six years later, right, my bottom, I was in a hotel room. For, awake for seven days, smoking crack, doing molly, um, drinking whatever, and I was talking to shadows and I was so afraid that I thought the best idea I had was to kill myself by lighting that hotel room on fire, right? So I did that. Um, I know a lot of people don't like police in here, but like Hialeah Police Department saved my ass, right? And I, you know, I'm grateful to them because they went into that fire and dragged me out. Um, and like, yo, I was so close to the fire that the glasses on my face melted, right? Like that's how close I was to that fire. Um, yet I'm still here, right? That's, you know, and, and um, you know what? And like, I, I'm a little nervous. And, and Tony told me like, don't be nervous. You know, take your mind out of it and speak from your heart. You got a big heart. And it's funny because like the literature I'm gonna talk about is the unconditional love that we have in Narcotics Anonymous, right? I wasn't gonna come up here and share some Gucci shit and talk about recovery and relapse or the, the, you know, the self-acceptance and and, you know, like you hear that all the time. But I I have a piece from It Works How and Why in the 12th step that talks about the unconditional love of Narcotics Anonymous. And then I'm gonna tell you how the unconditional love of Narcotics Anonymous saved my ass, right? And like, you know, first Narcotics Anonymous meeting ever, welcome to the greatest show on earth. You know what I mean? Like, this is the place, this is the spot we save lives here. We don't fuck around, right? And if you know me, you know I'm a clown, I have fun, I joke around, but when it comes to recovery, I'm dead serious, right? I'm dead serious about my recovery. Um, So anyways, Literature. It works how and why. If you don't have one, get one. It's a good book. Um, 12 step page 120. The principle of unconditional love is expressed in our attitude. Anyone who reaches out for help is entitled to our compassion, our attention, 
our unconditional acceptance. Any addict, regardless of clean time, should be able to pour out his or her pain in an atmosphere of free judgment. Most of us have found that we are able to feel great empathy for those who suffer from our disease, precisely because it is our disease. Our empathy isn't abstract, nor is our understanding. Instead, it is born of a shared experience. We greet each other with the recognition reserved for survivors of the same near fatal catastrophe. This shared experience, more than anything else, contributes to the atmosphere of unconditional love in our meetings. I'm going to read this one sentence again. We greet each other with the recognition reserved for survivors of the same nearly fatal catastrophe. If you're in a Narcotics Anonymous meeting, congratulations, you just survived. You survived a near fatal catastrophe because people are fucking dying, right? Left and right, when I go on Facebook and I'm numb to it now, you see people dying all the time, right? And it, it sucks. And I see my friends, and I see them go out and use, and you know, like I don't judge them like I love them, right? Because after I had two years clean, and I, I, I relapsed six years, come back, right? Came back so many times in those six years that I collected 36 white key tags, right? So 36 white key tags later, I'm coming up on five years. So if you're beating yourself up for relapsing, fuck that. You made it back, you survived, right? You know how many times I fucking relapsed and I came back crying to Narcotics Anonymous about how I just wanted to be home. And like, that's what I love about being in here. I see the faces of Narcotics Anonymous. I see the pain, I see the suffering, I see the joy, I see the love, right? And like, that's what we see in Narcotics Anonymous because of that unconditional love, right? I'll tell you guys about my first Narcotics Anonymous meeting ever. Um, I went to a clubhouse down in Miami called Back on Track, it's not there anymore. Um, if you know about it, that was the spot. Um, and I went into a meeting and I sat down and it was the first meeting I'd ever been to and I'm detoxing, kicking. I raised my hand and I said, you know, I'm Sean and I, I have a problem with, with you know, cocaine and, and pills. And the guy turns around and looks at me, old timer. Oh, there's a meeting for that. You're in the wrong place. I said, what the fuck? So I left the meeting. And I've later come to find out it was an AA meeting. And I'm not knocking the other fellowship. You will never hear me knock anyone who's trying to save someone's life. Doesn't matter what fucking fellowship you're in. I'm in NA. I have an NA sponsor. I work NA steps. I speak the NA language. I love this fellowship and I love this program. I work steps and I work traditions with my sponsor. Right? And I'm slacking on my step work and I can be honest about that because I need to get on top of that shit because my step work is what's gonna keep me clean. I can go to 100 meetings and still be miserable because I'm not working steps, right? Like the changes in the steps. This is a 12 step program and it's a painful fucking thing to be in a 12 step program and not work any steps. It's a painful fucking thing. And I know it because I've been there and I've done that. Like I've done everything you could possibly imagine in this program wrong. And I've done 100 things right too. You know, the, the one thing that, you know, and Tony was talking about it, right? Like, I did pick up that medallion, and I was so fucked up on Xanax, I had to lean against the wall. And I'm like, eh, thank you. And I thought everybody didn't know. <laughs> right? Like, you guys know. you can, We can smell a dog in here. You know what I mean? A dog can smell a dog in Narcotics Anonymous. We fucking know if you're high, but we still love you. You know what I mean? I see people coming to meetings, and, and they're high. And I said, I was at a meeting the other day, and this kid was, I mean, yo, you could smell it on him. And, you know, he's like, I got 22 days clean. I just hugged him, man. You just got to hug these people. You got to love people. Hug the newcomer. Hold, hug the old timer, right? Just because she has 11 years doesn't mean she can't go through shit. Right. She might need a hug. That's right. She might need a hug. Hug somebody in Narcotics Anonymous. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you this. Like, I used to, I, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Trackside Plaza, but I used to go to Trackside Plaza when I was using, and when I was claiming counterfeit clean time, <laughs> right? And, and like, and like I'm in the bathroom, I'm in the bathroom, 
you know, and I'm hitting the pipe in the bathroom and I'm blowing it into the AC vent. And then I would go and then I would go into the meeting, raise my hand and share some good literature shit because I got that shit memorized and I could fucking quote some literature. I love the literature. So I, I was sharing all kinds of good shit all cracked out, man. And, you know, it, it's fucking it, it's it, you guys can laugh, right? I just told you I smoke crack and you guys are laughing. I love it. I love it. Right? Like when I was using, right, I would get so paranoid that I would take potato chips and line them in front of the hotel room door. So if somebody walked in front, I could hear them crunch. (laughs) Right? And like, this is no lie. No lie. One time, one time I heard the crunching and I hopped out the bathroom window and I'm fucking running down Hollywood, running down US1 and my boxers and a wife beater. And um, I went back to the hotel and I said, man, what happened? And my homegirl was in there and she's like, yo, it was a dog. <laughs> the fucking dog was eating the potato chips. You know, so like I said, we're gonna have some fun in here. You know, I came to share and I came to share a Narcotics Anonymous message. And the Narcotics Anonymous message, part of that is we can have fun in recovery. Part of that is we can smile. Yo, if you see my man Marvin at the conventions, boy, he's lit. It's great. You know what I mean? But like, we have a good time. You know, we just had a convention, South Broward, shout out. You know what I mean? That's my area. We, you know, we, we did a big thing. And um, the convention was amazing. We were all dressed up in Halloween costumes. I was a fat pirate. Oh, Tony! Right? And, uh, you know, Tony did a great job. He does service, man. He does service. I take a little credit for his recovery. You know what I mean? I introduce new people. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm introducing him to people, but I'm using I'm driving them around to meetings, but I'm using. I used to carry around a pocket of change so they couldn't hear the pill bottle in my pocket rattling. Like that worked. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that, that's, that's the shit I did. You know, that, that's the shit I did. But back to the unconditional love. Back when I, was, when I was using and I was going to the meetings and everybody was going to my sponsor and being like, even Tony was one of them. You know, what's wrong with Sean? Is, is he all right? And my sponsor would say, allow him his process. Allow him his process. We got to allow people their process. Recovery, we cannot force recovery on people. I know I can't. I can't grab somebody and be like, oh, you got to recover. Trust me, I want to shake some people very close to me and do that. But I can't. Right? All I can do is love people. Right? And like, if you know me, like, I'm all about the love. I'm all about the love. You see me at a convention? I got that Cuban coffee. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Right. Everybody knows me at the convention. Like, I got Cuban coffee for you, and I keep everybody yes. hopping. Yes. And, yes. Yeah. That's why I'm dead on the floor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, like I said, you know, we're here to have fun. We're here to talk about recovery. But um, that first meeting I went to, man, and that guy told me, there was a meeting for that, and I stumbled out of that meeting, and I was crying. And uh, this guy was coming up the stairs, and you know, he said, are you all right? Do you, do you need anything? And I told him what happened, and he said, no, 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 come with me, come with me. Sit down, drink a cup of coffee, I got you. Drank the coffee, a new meeting started, and I went in there, and it was my first Narcotics Anonymous meeting I'd ever been to, right? And those people allowed me to detox on their couch, throwing up in garbage cans, basically staying in meetings, meeting after meeting after meeting. Um, And they loved me. They didn't care. They didn't care that I smelled like shit, I looked like shit, and I probably shit myself. You know, and I'm not, that's, that's, that's where I was. That's where I was, I was broken. And um, talk about why, you know, that's why I realized for two years clean, and a day I used. Like the day after I got two years clean, I thought I got this and I used because I forgot about Narcotics Anonymous. Um, but, but in those six years, man, you, know, you talk about unconditional love. I remember there was one day when, I, man, we were just talking about this in the car on the ride over, man. I was, I was on that flocka. And um, I, forgot, I was so fucked up that I forgot where I lived. And I'm walking around Tamarack and I couldn't figure out where I lived. My phone was dead. Uh, you know, I'm in like pajama pants 
and, and a wife beater and it's pouring rain and um, funny thing is is when I was using I always had a meeting list on me and I always kept the meeting list on me it was weird um, I found a meeting and I walked into that meeting and it was a women's meeting <laughs> it was a women's meeting and um, you know what they did they loved me they told me to sit down they got me a blanket. They kept me warm. They took me home. And they told me to keep coming back. That's what we do here in Narcotics Anonymous. I walked into a women's meeting and they took care of me, right? And I'm forever grateful for that meeting. I'm forever grateful for a lot of meetings. I'm forever grateful for Narcotics Anonymous. Like this is my home. And, um, that's why I say I love looking around the room. I love seeing you guys' faces, man. You know, it gets me hyped. You know, I get, I get, I get excited for Narcotics Anonymous. And um, talk a little more about that unconditional love or just the love in the room in general. And I don't say I'm in the rooms and none of that hot bullshit. I'm a member of Narcotics Anonymous. You know, when people ask me, you know, what do you do? You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not in recovery or I'm not in the rooms. I'm a member of Narcotics Anonymous. I recover loudly. I recover loudly. And if you know me, if you're my friend on Facebook, you know I recover loudly. And I make sure that people have a place to go and feel safe. I will show up. I will pick up newcomers. I will take them out. And I'm starting to do that again. And I kind of drifted away from NA, but I'm, I'm starting to feel my passion for it again. You know, I'm coming up on five years. And that's a fucking miracle for someone who couldn't put down the pipe for five minutes. Um, I like saying that I'm coming up on five years you know what I mean that impresses the fuck out of me you know I, I'm not trying to impress you it impresses me you know like I'm excited you know Tony's giving me my medallion on, on, on the 8th and it, it's, he probably already forgot but it's okay <laughs> you know what I mean when you get old shit starts slipping your mind but uh yeah <laughs> Text. He's got it on a text, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now, nah, like I said, we're going to have fun. Um, you know, unconditional love. It, uh, just, the, just the love in general. The love of Narcotics Anonymous. Um, you know, last, last August I got sick, right? You know, and, and I got COVID. And um, I didn't think it was a big deal. I didn't pay attention to it. I didn't really care. And then I got it. Um, and I remember I tested positive probably about, I don't know, a week later, four or five days later. I don't remember this, but I was in the hospital. Um, I went into a coma in August. I woke up in November. Right? Like, if you know me, you know that's part of my story. But I'll tell you this. Like, the love that came from Narcotics Anonymous, like, you guys took care of my girl while I was in there. You know, um, you guys showed up, you know, and um, when I got out, I remember I went, I went to an NA event. It was the, uh, the basketball thing. I went to the basketball thing, and when I got out of my car, people fucking clapped, right? People clapped, and I had a walker, like an old motherfucker, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm walking, and people are hugging me, and I had a mask on because I, I was still, you know, real afraid, and... Um, you know, you guys, you guys took care of me, and you guys loved me, and you loved the people in my life. But that's that's what Narcotics Anonymous is about, man. Like, uh, Narcotics Anonymous saved my life. You know what I mean? It's it saved my life, and it can save yours. You know what I mean? Just give it a chance. That's all. Just give Narcotics Anonymous a chance. You know, give recovery a chance. You know, save your life because um, your life is worth saving. Like, if you don't believe it, like, you were given the life you had because you were strong enough to survive it. You know? So, so always remember that and, and just, you know, keep pushing. Thank you for letting me share. Yeah.